On this week's Flame Central, Liberty Baseball receives its highest national ranking in program history. And we talk Malik Willis with an ESPN draft expert. Plus, we bring you a story of resilience from Liberty Lacrosse and get you caught up on March Madness. This is Flame Central. UNC travels to Liberty Baseball Stadium for a top 25 matchup. Plus, Liberty football stays in the headlines. Welcome on in to Flames Central. I'm Matt. He's Rhett. And we just finished one of the busiest weeks in the Liberty athletic calendar. Yeah, Liberty basketball in the thick of the conference tournament. But before we give you all the details on their game versus Bellarmine, let's talk some baseball. Yeah, let's do it. We head to the Diamond. Liberty carried a 10-game win streak into their Tuesday matchup with North Carolina. And that hot streak had the Flames moving up the poles. The official poll that we go with is the D1 baseball poll. They had Liberty at number 14, the highest ranking in program history. The Flames opponent, North Carolina, they came in hot as well, ranked number 15. So we have the first top 25 matchup in Liberty Baseball Stadium history. And the Flames didn't wait long to get the crowd on its feet. First inning, Aaron Anderson drives one out to right field, his fourth home run of the season, put Liberty on top one to nothing. And from that point on, it was all about the pitching. Both teams feature some big time arms and they were on full display. A combined 24 strikeouts between the two teams. Liberty would also get some help defensively. How about Logan Matthew, the Flames' first baseman with this diving grab? It would make Sports Center's top plays the next morning. It was that spectacular. Big fella showing some range. Against all odds with these two offenses, somehow it was still a one nothing ball game in the ninth. UNC would threaten, get a couple runners on, but everybody's favorite psycho closer, Kate Hungate, slamming the door. Liberty beats the Tar Heels and continues its incredible season, improving to 11-1 on the year. I think our guys have just done a great job of, of staying with, you know, every game matters. It started down there at Florida. I thought our guys were really composed in an environment. You know, this was probably better tonight than it was down there. But, you know, that's why you take those trips. It prepares you for it. I just think our players deserve this. You know, they've done such a good job of, of just competing in these environments. It started last year, I think, with Knoxville. And, you know, that didn't go our way. And now, you know, we've, we've got a chance to be able to, to do some things and have a crowd like this in a top 25 matchup. It went our way. It was a fun night. Awesome to see history being made with the first top 25 matchup played at Worthington Field. Also got us to thinking about previous moments in Liberty Athletics history that may not have been caught on camera. Here's the first installment of a new segment called Storytime as we sit down with a former Liberty baseball and football great. Hi, I'm Chip Smith, LU Hall of Famer 2010, and boy do I have a story for you. This is a great Liberty story from the early years. So I was very fortunate, uh, blessed and fortunate to play four years of football and four years of baseball. And I played on the very first football team, the very first baseball team. So our second year, uh, we actually played the University of South Carolina in Columbia. We played them in a double hitter. We went down there and I mean, they beat the brakes off of us. I mean, I can't remember. It was like 18 to two or something ridiculous in the second game. It was ridiculous. So my senior year, uh, which was in 1976. We'd only been playing for, uh, it was actually the fourth year of the program. We played the University of South Carolina in Lynchburg, Virginia at City Stadium. And they were ranked at the time, they were ranked number two in the nation. And they went on to play in the College World Series. And so they came into Lynchburg and of course, you know, everybody thought that they were gonna just wear us out. And that game was incredible. We won that game 13 to six uh, there in Lynchburg. And I can remember after the game, Coach uh, Bobby Richardson, who was the head coach at South Carolina, came to our dugout and he said, fellas, uh, you know, I'm, I want to congratulate you for a great win. And certainly, I think the greatest win in Liberty sport, sports history that's never talked about, you know, a, a four-year program that beats the number two team in the nation. I was blessed to have scored the first run of that game and I scored the 13th run of that game. So I remember what, like it was yesterday and I had great teammates and we just had a great game, played a complete game and uh, they were shocked that uh, these old Christian boys from uh, LBC uh, put a whipping on them. So uh, proud to be a part of that LU history. Liberty hosting number 11, Arkansas. If you like dingers, you're going to love this game. Top of the second, Razorbacks already up 5-0. When Lenny Malkin puts four more runs up on the board with a monster shot off the scoreboard. 9-0 Arkansas. 
Bottom of the second, base is loaded for LU. When the freshman Rachel Crane sends it deep, her first career home run is a grand slam, bringing Liberty to within five. LU would struggle to keep runs off the board though, with Arkansas adding four more in the top of the third to make it 13 to four. And they'd never look back, taking it by final 14 to nine. We turn to hoops now. Liberty basketball have won the last three A-Sun tournaments, thus earning three straight bids to the NCAA tourney. But that streak would unfortunately come to an end in the A-Sun semifinals against Bellarmine. This one played in a raucous Liberty Arena. It was packed, although it wouldn't be too loud in the opening minutes. The Knights went on a 14-2 run to begin the game. But the Flames, they would respond. They got a big spark off the bench from freshman Brody Peebles. He scored 10 points in the first half to lead the Flames to an eight-point lead at the break. Second half, this game felt like it was within a possession or two the entire time. Darius McGee carrying most of the offensive load. He scored 16 of his 21 after the half. But in the closing minutes, it was Bellarmine's Dylan Penn making some difficult shots to put the Knights in front. McGee would get one last chance to tie it up. At the end of the ball game, Flames down three. This desperation three-point bid comes up empty, and Bellarmine comes away with the win 53-50, bringing an end to the Flames' season and ending the streak of NCAA tournament appearances. That was a uh, tough one. Uh, really thought Bellarmine played a heck of a game and deserved to win. Uh, but uh, I love this group. Uh, our guys are unbelievable individuals, unbelievable workers, selfless in nature. I'm disappointed that uh, we don't get to go back to the NCAA tournament. Um, but proud of our group and uh, their effort tonight in the season. Liberty and Jacksonville State in the A Sun semis. Buckle up, this was a wild ride. Kiana Johnson with a hot start for the Gamecocks as they jumped out to a 12 to three lead. Then the spark plug, D Brown would get Liberty going with a strong take to the hoop. D Brown would end up with 16. Second quarter, Jordan Bailey hitting from distance would bring LU to within one. However, it would still be the Gamecocks leading at the half 25-20. Let's head to the fourth quarter. Late stages, losing team goes home. With under 10 seconds to go, Kennedy Williams takes it down the lane, ties it at 57 with 3.3 seconds left. Gamecocks would call a timeout, advancing the ball to midcourt, where Kiana Johnson would score her game-high 21st point to eliminate Liberty from the conference tournament, a heartbreaking loss for a Liberty team that had won 27 games. All right, turning our attention to football, and I'm truly not saying this because Malik Willis was a former Flame. Willis has the hearts of fan bases across the nation wrapped around his finger. Whether it be his off-the-field charm or his deep ball ability on the gridiron, teams are drooling at his raw potential. Willis continued to impress at the NFL Draft Combine. Rich Eisen and company covered his throwing session that was met by many whoos and ahs. However, where the quarterback really impressed was at the podium. Willis continues to display that his newfound national attention isn't going to his head. It is what it is. I'm going to just keep on going. I mean, I'm not playing for their approval. I'm playing for the only one approval I like respect, God. I'm playing for audience of one. I don't really care too much about you know what he and she say. Everybody's going to have an opinion of you. So if you focus so hard on what everybody's opinion is of you, you're never going to be happy. Like, I want to be happy, so I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to let the opinion of people I trust and I can respect, uh, I'm going to let that, you know, help me. Like my coaches and my, you know, my family. Well, Malik Willis has the football world buzzing after his combine performance. And it had us talking on this week's Flame Central podcast. Our guest, ESPN draft analyst Jordan Reed, and he provided some good insight into what teams see in the former Liberty QB. When it comes down to actually a team selecting him, how much does that stuff matter in the eyes of GMs? Oh, it matters a ton, just because this is the person that is going to be spearheading your organization for the next 10 to 12 years or even more. So you want to make sure you have the correct person in place. Of course, the on-the-field dynamic is the most important, but off the field, this is the person that is representing your organization. This person is a walking billboard, and the biggest sticker on that billboard is your logo of that organization. So Malik helping out the homeless person is great. Him passing the test with the interviews is great, too, from everything that I heard. His formal interviews went great, too. He was really impressive on the whiteboard when he got up to be in front of teams, too. So he just continues to check boxes. And like I told you guys a few weeks ago down in Mobile, I, I would be surprised if he's not the first quarterback off the board. For more expert insight on Malik Willis throughout the draft process, be sure to download, subscribe to the Flame Central podcast. Rhett, Emily, and I take a deeper dive into all things Liberty Athletics. 
bring on some great guests as well. Don't miss out Flame Central Podcast. Well, amidst all the Malik Willis buzz, you might have missed that Liberty football started spring ball. Hugh Freeze and company getting to work in preparation for a challenging 2022 slate. Now, this roster returns plenty of talent from a team that won eight games, including its third straight bowl game. But they also have added some high-level transfers at key positions. Quarterback, running back, tight end, defensive line, all have added transfers, most of them from Power 5 programs. And head coach Hugh Freeze hopes those guys won't just provide depth, but will be impactful early for Liberty. I don't, I don't promise anything but an opportunity in recruiting. Um, but certainly, if we didn't feel they had the potential to uh, be a first-teamer or a second-teamer, we would certainly probably go a high school route. We believe in our minds that when we go into spring practice that these uh, young men that, that, that have joined us from those programs, I'm hopeful that we were right in the fact that they are, they're coming to help us immediately. Still to come on Flame Central, the story of Liberty Lacrosse's Hannah Quast and her faith through adversity. Plus a new warm hot in fuego and top 50 moment when Flame Central returns. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs. We're living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books and an education should set you free not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget, your time, and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help get you ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, Graduation day, your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. A bachelor's degree is more than a diploma. It's about standing on your own two feet, so you can give back in a way no one else can. At Liberty University, we believe in giving back. So when you study online, you won't pay for books. And when you're out fighting for others, we have your back by discounting your tuition and holding rates steady for over six years. Over 100 undergraduate degrees, one you, infinite possibilities. Since 1971, Liberty's had one mission, training champions for Christ. Our standard is excellence with integrity, and we want to equip you with the resources you need to achieve your personal and career goals. We, the business leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries of Liberty University are committed to becoming leaders of distinction because we are men and women who want to serve others and change the world for Christ. You'll find opportunities for competitive fellowships while developing the business ethics, knowledge, and experience that top companies are looking for. Choose from over 50 degree programs such as business administration, marketing, and information technology. At Liberty, you'll become more than just an accountant, executive, or cybersecurity analyst. You'll become a champion for Christ. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Flame Central. UNC was not the only ranked opponent competing on the campus of Liberty University this past week. Liberty Lacrosse hosted their biggest challenger on the schedule in number 12, Florida. First quarter action, Liberty's Mackenzie Lehman scores the initial goal of the contest, her 17th of the season, putting Liberty up 1-0. But the Gators would go on to score five unanswered and would leave 5-2 after one. Late stages, second quarter, and Lehman would tally another to keep the Flames within striking distance at the half with a score of 8-4. 
In the third quarter, the Gators would lock it down defensively, holding the Flames scoreless for the first 22 minutes and 51 seconds of the second half. Florida would go on to win by a score of 14 to six as the Flames fall to three and three on the season. Well, we stay with lacrosse for our next story. Injuries, they're part of the game. Countless athletes have had to overcome an injury to get back out on the field. But Hannah Quast, she's had to overcome far more than most. She's been tested again and again. But through each injury, each setback, her faith has only grown stronger. Mm. I held tightly a verse in Matthew 6. It says, therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body. What you will wear isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? The journey for Liberty lacrosse defender Hannah Quast has had more ups and downs than most will ever know. Three, two, one. I loved the sport ever since I picked up a ball and stick. I've always been a passionate player. Uh, I always played with my heart in high school. Um, I knew right away when I went into high school that I wanted to play um, at a collegiate level. 41, 42, 43, 44, push! Stay with it, stay with it, here we go. Senior year of high school, I tear my ACL. It was really hard coming in with an injury because you couldn't physically be out there on the field working and pursuing uh, the same goal with your teammates who can. So it was definitely hard and I feel like the Lord used that time specifically um, to really just grasp my heart. Hannah would recover from ACL surgery and begin a successful college career with the Flames, starting in every game her sophomore and junior season. Great shot there from Hannah Cross is a bounce in shot. All seemed on track for Hannah until her career came to a screeching halt. Spring 2020, we come back, the team looks great. We feel really good about our pursuit for the championship. So we get done preseason and we're heading into our first game in Eugene against Oregon. Whistle blows, we're playing. And it's so weird, I went to dive for a ball and I land on my shoulder. There's a flame down, hurting. It looks like it's number 11, Anna Quast. I basically break my shoulder. Hannah's pain tolerance is just completely different than any normal person. Like most normal people would have come right out of the game. She only knows one speed and the girl only goes 100 miles an hour. Quast would have surgery on her shoulder and after months of rehab, she would rejoin her teammates back for fall training and a run at an ASUN championship. But her body would have other plans. This is now my week three of being able to play um, from my shoulder surgery. And we were running the 300 test, just normal. And I'm on lap four or round four of the test. And all I hear is this loud pop um, and I'm just, next thing you know, I'm on my hands and knees crawling, like kind of like groaning because I'm in pain and don't know what's going on. I tore my Achilles. <laughs> it basically snapped and rolled up um, in, at the top of my calf. And she just goes down and starts screaming. And I immediately know something's wrong because like I said, Hannah's on the ground 75% of the time, so, you know, and even when she does have a serious injury, you don't know. So I knew it was bad. What was supposed to be a magical fifth year turned into more heartbreak and questioning for Hannah. I was so angry um, at this point. I was like, okay, Lord, I came back for a fifth year um, because I hurt my shoulder and now I have to sit out another year. Like, do you really, not want me to play lacrosse anymore. Through the emotional and physical pain, God would reveal himself. The rehab process was so hard and so long and was really humbling because I literally couldn't do anything. I couldn't walk on my own. I couldn't go up steps on my own. During that time, it was really cool to see um, the Lord's providence through my community, through my teammates just caring for me in those little ways. 
And I really learned to be grateful for the little things, like even the slightest things of like skipping to the car. Annie's first walk. <laughs> Keep coming. As she prepared for one final comeback, Hannah would lean on the Lord for strength. I really felt God's comfort just knowing that no matter what, He'll get me through it, He'll um, carry me. And I felt this overwhelming confidence and peace. They who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Let go, I felt all this emotion of this year and what I endured and really felt God just like giving me a huge hug saying like, we did it. With the final hurdle passed, Hannah could join her teammates for a sixth and final season. Hannah's example of resiliency is so important to the rest of the team because to see someone like Hannah every single day demonstrate what it looks like to just like be faithful and show up and work hard and, you know, pursue the Lord regardless of what her life is looking like and what her circumstances are. I mean, I mean, you don't get a better example than that. It's just incredible. Like, I had never seen her sad, upset in front of the team, not one time. And this kid has had how many surgeries? She's had how many injuries? She sat on the sideline more than she's played in the game. And every time, if you walk by her, she's cheering her teammates on. She's so excited about everything that's happening. It doesn't matter if she's involved in it or not. And I think that's one of the best things you can learn from a teammate. Here we go! Because I've had two years where I haven't been able to wear the Liberty jersey and represent this university actually physically on the field, I just want to play. It's never been about goals or playing time or anything, but the pursuit of something so much greater than us. That's what I love most about Liberty Lacrosse is it changes you, it changes the way you live, it changes the way you love, it changes the way you serve. It's never about you. It's more about the people beside me celebrating victories. Thanks to our own Donald Scott for producing that story and to Hannah for sharing her yeah. story, certainly. All right, time now for a warm, hot, and fuego top play player moment from the past week. Rhett, we have a theme this week. Yeah, we do. This is the time of year with March Madness, conference yeah. tournaments that yeah. we really find out that love hurts. Oh. You know, you love your team, you're oh, behind them, gotcha. and then it just, they rip the heart out of your yeah, chest. Yeah, well, so we've experienced that. Warm here, is that, we? just yeah. kids at home, love hurts. That's yeah. the, that's okay. that's warm. There, Rhett's sending life <laughs> yeah. lessons out uh, to yeah. the audience. All yeah. right, let's start with Warm. Yeah. Who you got here? Priscilla Smingy. I know yeah. a tough loss against Jacksonville yeah. State, but in the game earlier in the week against Eastern Kentucky, she was at her best going uh, perfect from beyond the arc at one point. She was four for four from three. She was just dropping him down. Priscilla Smingy, so fun to watch during her year and a half at Liberty. A tremendous defender. She had a career high 18 points in this game. A big reason, a big spark why Liberty did so well against the Colonels. She was able to shut down Jayla Johnson, who is a six foot two athletic big. She can really get to the rim well. And I think that's one area of Liberty's game moving forward. Now, there could still be postseason play. Not saying sure, it's over sure. yet, but next season, you're going to miss that ability from Smingy just to lock her onto the other team's star player and shut them down. Yeah, what a career yeah. she had. Short, certainly, in her time at Liberty, right. but she certainly made an impact. Yeah. All right, from warm, we go to hot. Warm, it's okay to get back up and dust yourself off. Yeah, you know, another right, good right, life right, lesson. Right. And then yeah. we move on. Liberty softball. This is a team that had won 14 of their last 15 games. Yeah. Now, just a tremendous effort by them in this Liberty Softball Invitational. Lou Allen found the pop in the bat. She had two monster dingers against Rutgers. Carly Keeney, she had her second no-hitter on the season. She was just dealing it out left and right, getting those ground balls. That's what she likes to do. Alexis Soto, the freshman, yeah. you and I have been Ooh, really impressed really by her, out. hitting over 400 on the season. And then also, you've got Caroline Hudson. She's got such a tremendous arm from back there, and she's also found some pop in her bat. All these pieces together, Liberty softball is off to, uh, after a slow start, have really hit their stride. And it's looking like they could get back into the top 25 in the nation. 
Exciting times yes. with baseball and softball. Both been incredibly exciting yes. here this year. Yeah. Is that a, maybe a tease for who's in fuego? It is. Yes, it is. Baseball. Huh? Yes, Who it we is. got? It's going to be Derek Orndorff. Oh, okay. It's okay to love again. That's what that was in fuego. <laughs> this guy has just been tremendous all season long. I think the biggest part of his story is just how much he wanted to come to Liberty. Yeah. And then, too, at first, it's like, hey, bud, you're not, you may not be able to play center field here. Like, yeah. we've got a stud already, a Jalen guy. He's like, oh, no problem. You know, I'll find my spot. Now, unfortunately, injuries do occur. He gets in there. And then who would have thought at the beginning of the year that Derek Orndorff would be your you national know, your... leader in home runs? Exactly. Unbelievable like, start. What a story. A super guy. Great to see Liberty Baseball yeah. continue to reach new heights, and he's a big part Certainly of it. Certainly is. He's getting a lot of national attention these yeah. days for the season that he's having. All right, Brett, great job as always. Hey, when we come back, we'll take a look at one of the top moments in Liberty Athletics history. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Flame Central. Well, it's that time of the show again. Yeah. The time where we look back on one of the top moments from the past 50 years of Liberty Athletic. Yeah, this week we travel to 2005 when current assistant women's basketball coach Katie Feenstra Matera put the nation on notice that Liberty University was no joke. March 20th, 2005. Women's basketball is seated 13th in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Up first, the fourth seeded Penn State. Unbelievable! The Liberty Lady Flames have upset Penn State 78 to 70. It was the program's first ever victory in the NCAA tournament, but they weren't done. Two days later, they would repeat the feat. Katie Feenstra Matera would lead the Flames with 29 points and 13 rebounds to upset fifth seeded DePaul, becoming just the second 13 seed in NCAA women's basketball history to reach the Sweet 16. Definitely a top five moment yeah. in my yeah. mind for Liberty Athletics. Well, before we let you go, we have one last heartwarming video to show you. Yeah, do you remember what your parents would always say? Character is what you do or who you are when nobody's watching. Yeah. Well, Malik Willis, he must have been listening. This video captured while Willis was in Indianapolis at the Combine shows Willis suitcase open, giving gear to what appears to be a homeless person in downtown Indy. This video blew up on social media as the rest of the country continues to learn what we already knew, and that is Willis is a high character kid. Great representative yeah. for Liberty University, certainly. I love that video, how the guys in the background are just like, that, is that Malik? Yeah, yeah. that is Malik, yeah. that is Malik yeah. Willis. So. What I love more is he says, I wish he hadn't been caught on video. Yeah. He's, he's just that so kind of guy. All right, well, hey, we're sure. about out of time. As always, check out the Flame Central podcast and libertyflamecentral.com for any videos you might have missed. Yeah, lots of football talk, basketball talk coming up in the future. It's going to be great. It sure is. All right, he's Rhett. I'm Matt. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week.